really quick here too. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 16th episode of James Squared. Of course, when you think of 16, you don't think of Hank Conger or Houston Street. You think of Garrett Anderson. I hope you would out there. Um, we have to mention uh, to subscribe on Halos in the Infield on YouTube and on um, uh, Believe for the podcast formation there and milu how are you doing today one half of uh squared i'm pretty good worst angels are doing a little bit better but pretty good i don't know if that'll ever happen in our lifetimes again yeah, uh, right? but if you want to drink your sorrows away go to no bell works like i did with todd and everyone else last saturday uh just mention heady for some discounts there a really great thing also shout out to uh mezzos the new sponsor uh calzones and wings you can find them right there um, delicious yeah over at the stadium promenade uh it was the, where the old rubios is right there uh, off of catella right there so check them out there also go to 714 tickets 714 tickets 714 tickets call day and you can go tonight you know, uh, before you go to Noble Oil Works or before you go to uh, 714 Tickets, go to Noble Oil Works there on St Sinclair Street. And then down the street there, right across the street from the Honda Center, uh, 714 Tickets is right there. Make sure you put in the code HITI for 10% off of your 714 Tickets purchase and the checkout. Then you get 5% off each time you use it. And then buy Bet Online. Bet online is your number one source for NHL and NBA playoffs. We're getting almost to the finals in that uh, this season. Every stat, every matchup, even live odds during the games. Uh, and those are always fun. Uh, and then when the game is over, head on to the their online casino to get on a game of blackjack or unwind with one of the 150 slot games. Check that out. Or get a game of poker in before, too. And then head over to the website, Bet Online today, and get on get in on the action. And don't forget to use the code uh, BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, all in uh, caps. Your promo code there on Bet Online for 50% off your welcome bonus on your first deposit. It's easy win-win. So Bet Online, the game, starts here. So... Milu, let's uh, recap the country weekend that was at Angel Stadium last weekend. Of course, Friday night, everybody got cowboy hats, but not good baseball, unless you were a Guardian fan. Uh, Friday, it was definitely an embarrassing loss. It was one of those games you wish you weren't at, but uh, I, I don't know if the cowboy hat made anybody feel better. But the Angels lost 10-4 uh, to 4 over and out. It was just, um, it's really embarrassing. I mean, it was 10 to 2 at one point. You know, by, I think, yeah, by the fifth inning, it was 10 to 2, and you just felt like it was done with. Uh, Jose Ramirez, man, he's one of my favorite players. This dude, he's powerful. Uh, the game did start off and Ray Hifo hitting a home run, but then the hits came uh, for the Guardians. Uh, what was it? Arias had a single that brought home. Uh, a run, and then uh, there was a wild pitch by Sandoval that brought in another. Then Ramirez hit his first home run of the night to make it a 4-1 to one lead. Ohapi did uh, get a run in to make it 4-2, and that's about as close as it got. Uh, Freeman had a sacrifice fly in the fourth. Ramirez in the fourth hit a home run, so back-to-back -back, uh, play appearances with home runs to make it 7-2. to two. Then Josh Naylor hit a solo shot to make it 8-2. David Fry hit a home run to make it 9-2. And then Jimenez had a single to make it 10-2. Adele did get a late homer to make it 10-3. And then 10-4 with Ohapi hitting a home run. But it was never, uh, it was always uh, never in doubt for the um, for the Guardians. Sandoval had a really, really tough night. And it just seems like this has been a theme with him. Eight runs given up, six hits. 
Four walks, four strikeouts, and three home runs given up in three and two-third innings. Suarez came in, didn't fare any better with a run, two runs given up, four hits, uh, two walks, two strikeouts. It was just really, really a poor performance by the Angels pitching. Then the next night happened, and I was there. Uh, before the game, as many of you have known, if you've been watching Halos in the infield, uh, the Halo honk was there. And uh, it was Todd, right? He was dressed up in his clown outfit. We went in. Uh, we thought we were good. And then they didn't allow him in. And he tried to get in. I mean, the family went in along with Halo Joe. And then even with, you know, everything brought back and all the bags, you know, that were uh, put back away, um, the revolution didn't happen. And... You know, Halo Hong uh, couldn't get in. Angel Security did not allow it. Artie did not allow it. Carpino didn't allow it. It was just a really, really um, unfortunate thing. Uh, I did get to see some of the game. Unfortunately, a lot of it uh, happened when I was away, though. But uh, the, r the runs happened when I was away. So in the third inning was the only scoring, basically. Uh, again, Cleveland won. Uh, four to three. Freeman had a single for Cleveland to make it one nothing. And then Ramirez, guess what? He had another home run to make it four to nothing. Of three. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was frustrating there. Uh, but in the bottom of the third, uh, Taylor Ward hit a three-run home run to make it four to three, and basically the pitching took off from there. So uh, Clase got the save there. BB got the win, and Jose Soriano kind of the Hard luck loser uh, for Saturday. Sunday, it was a really, really close game. Uh, Detmers pitched, I guess, well enough. But uh, Lively got the win. Klaze got another save. Guardians went on to win 5-4. Uh, some key moments in this. Uh, Rodriguez for them had a double to make it 2-0. Thice hit a mammoth home run to right field to make it 2-2. Uh, Freeman was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. Uh, Simber had a really bad time there. Jimenez had a single later on. There was a bases loaded uh, walk to make it 5-2. to two. And Hifo did have a single to make it 5-3. Pilar had another single, RBI single, to make it 5-4. But that was pretty much it. And then Adele had a tremendous robbery catch. I, yeah, I forget what inning it was, but he went back and he brought it back. It was pretty amazing to see uh, that uh, catch right there. That was pretty cool to see. Um, so what did you think about this country weekend? And, uh, I, of course, I didn't stay around for the fireworks show. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah for that or the Kit Moore concert, which they kept uh, talking about. I just didn't care about it, honestly. Uh, what do you think about Cleveland coming in and, and sweeping the Angels? Well, they're hot right now, so it didn't surprise me one bit that they come in and sweep the Halos. Now, <clears throat> pitching, aside from the first game, was pretty much on point. We played some close games. Um, <clears throat> I liked what I saw from the bullpen. Uh, it's just, a, you know, the Guardians are such a they play baseball on all cylinders right now. They have good starting pitching. They have a good bullpen. They have the Naylor boys. They have Jose Ramirez. And they're just firing on all cylinders right now. And they just kind of ran over the halos. Kind of left them stunned on country weekend. Kind of left them in the dust. And uh, all we have to show for that whole series was a couple of cowboy hats, Kip Moore and uh, then a, a Texas size catch by Adele. <laughs> so, hey, just like Artie said, just, they're here for the entertainment, not for the right. actual baseball. Right. And it was, it was yeah. a very sad weekend for the halos, but Hey, the fans came out, supported Artie. That's, that sucks about Todd not being able to get in. Uh, when I heard about that, I was like, really? Because I think halo Joe, went in with his paper bag mm -hmm. and he was wearing his probably. I saw a couple photos. 
Um, uh, I don't think it was Dirt Through the Gates, though. He didn't. Um, and the funny thing they mentioned was, yeah. to Halo Joe, they said, you know, you can't wear the bag or walking around, but you can wear it at your seat. I Why didn't they let Todd in? That. Yeah. That I think they knew that all of the things he's been saying, you know, somebody's watching Halo's in the infield. The post game right. show, the podcast, us, hopefully. And they see the criticism, they hear it from, you know, Todd Fox and others. So they know it's out there. And they've probably been on high alert, you know, to watch out for a clown because he's probably the only clown that comes in. So that's probably why he was shut down. I think those orders yeah. came from above. Yeah. Well, that's a shame. Um, you know, Todd does do a lot of good things Yeah, for the kids when he goes around as, as the, the halo hot clown, he gives out those thunder sticks. I know we've been with him. Um, it's all a good fun pretty much, but you know, fans got to be able to express themselves in any way that they, they feel that they see fit. So. I didn't have a problem with that. But, hey, apparently everyone else in the organization does. Yeah. That's but, what it feels like. Yeah. Um, so Memorial Day came, and, again, uh, we think of the ones that we lost, the ones that didn't come back from the war, uh, and the ones at home that are going through a lot. So we thank the, the soldiers that fought for the country. We and still love you. Hell yeah. For some reason, the Angels and Yankees did not play on Memorial Day weekend, or Memorial Day on Monday, even though the Yankees just finished up taking two out of three in San Diego, and the Angels were at home. It just didn't make sense at all for the schedule. Um, I, I didn't get that. But anyway, uh, they start the season, or start the series yeah. off on Tuesday. Uh, the Angels did hold on to win four to three somehow. Uh, Stevis got to save. Moore got the win. Weaver got the loss. For once, their bullpen was a blowpin, not ours. For some reason, uh, it started with Juan Soto hitting a big home run, his fifteenth of the year to right field, and then Pilar came up with a two-run home run in the bottom of the first to make it two to one. Then Soto uh, brought home. Uh, LeMahieu, who made his first uh, appearance of the season finally for the Yankees on Tuesday to make it 2-2. So it was the Soto versus Angel show. And then top of the fifth, Austin Wells had a double to bring home over run to make it 3-2. And then Taylor Ward brought in two on a double in the bottom of the eighth. Some clutch hitting for Taylor Ward in the uh, bottom of the eighth there. Again, Estevez got the save or whatever he does. Uh, Angels won four to three, and it was a real shocker. Then you see what happened yesterday. <sighs> yeah, the there's lost... a, some controversy. Oh yeah, so I guess I'll start with that because um, there was a play where Soto on a infield pop up rule uh, in the first inning, he deliberately clipped one or um, Neto in the air. I'm kind of surprised. Neto didn't like go after him or something. Maybe it's a respect factor. You don't go after stars in the MLB. I don't know. But Juan Soto easily stuck his leg out on purpose to reach the bag and then put his elbow up to hit Neto jumping for the ball. I mean, it was obvious. It's a cheap shot. It's a, you know, a dirty play. It's awful. I, I really hated that play. Uh, Aaron Boone was was ejected because they called um, Soto out. Uh, but, man, it, it was just one of those dirty-ass plays that you hate seeing. Um, again, the Angels did lose 2-1. to one. Tyler Anderson pitched his ass off, like just like last week when he faced, I think it was the um, Astros. He pitched his ass off and got the win. Uh, I think it was last Tuesday. And then uh, for some reason, 
Uh, the offense did not make it. Pilar didn't start. They went with Moniak his weekly, you know, BS appearances at the plate. Um, and Pilar was hitting just great. And Luis Hill did well for the Yankees as well. And the home plate up, his zone, Brian, Brian Walsh, was just wide. It was really wide, really high, just really all awful. I think he missed 22 pitches. And it's just something you can't have. And in the news of Angel Hernandez retiring, you really want better for the newer uh, umpires. Because I haven't heard his name before. And you're, not, you're not supposed to know the name of these umpires. And you did with him. Uh, the Angels' offense really slacked, other from the Ohapi home run. You had to wonder why Pilar didn't start. Maybe it's because of Moniac needing that, uh, you know, weekly start. But um, Anderson, you got to feel bad again because he got the the he he did so well, but then lost it. Uh, it's just a really really unfortunate uh, game. Uh, but it was one of those pitcher duels that uh just hurt hill got the win he's seven and one anderson goes to five and five with the loss and holmes got the save for new york and just seemed like the angels had a chance at the end there um but willie calhoun got into a double play to end the game and uh, you start to see that willie calhoun also is not uh pulling his weight there at the plate lately um and it's just unfortunate there. The scoring, again, it was Verdugo hitting a home run in the top of the fourth solo shot. Volpe um, came home on a uh, triple uh, error. So not a not a, um, not a a um, uh, home, what is it, um, not a round-the-world home run, but a inside-the-ball yeah, home run. Way. Yeah, little not way, one of those, run. but it was a triple slash error on uh, Renjifo. And then Ohapi again, bottom of the seventh, hit the home run and make it two to one. But that's as close as the Angels came. Uh, what's your opinion on what happened with Soto in that game yesterday? Well, the Yankees were clearly playing dirty. And when I saw that, I'm like, what, what the heck is he doing? And I just found out about this rule. It's a fairly new rule for this season in Major League Baseball, the interference rule. Yeah. And it, and we had a situation that happened last week with another team. <clears throat> this one was a little different. He had deliberately nudged Neto while he was in the air. And, and then that, that led to, you know, uh, the injection of, of uh, Aaron Boone and then Brad Osmus, former Angels manager Brad Osmus, came out to argue mm -hmm. as well or get an explanation as to why. And then we had... Anthony Rizzo, while he's on the base pass, deliberately boot the ball. He, while it was in play, he was automatically out, but it allowed the runner to reach first base without a double play. It would have been a double play. And it probably we would have got out of that inning. Um, so dirty play all the way around in last night's game. But what was more alarming is the Angels' lack of – Situational hitting, mm -hmm. especially in that ninth inning. Dropping the and bun why down in the hell was it? Yeah, and why in the hell wasn't Kevin Pillar not pinch playing, hit. or even you bring him in to pinch hit? You have Mickey Moniak with his. He came into the game hitting one eighty six, while the day before Kevin Pillar was the hero, pretty much. It was Taylor Ward and Kevin Pillar, the heroes of that game the night before. He's only 35 years old. Yeah. I mean, he's old for a baseball player, but hey, he can play more than one game a week or two games a week. Been and for whatever reason, Ron, Ron Washington, Wash wanted him. They don't want the explanation that was given earlier in the week was he was quoted as saying that he didn't want to burn him out. And just like you know, Todd always says he can he can play more than once. He can play multiple days in a row. It's not going to hurt him. It's not going to kill him. He's 35. You know, he's not 40, 45, you know, out there. But, uh, yeah, Mickey Moniac, they keep trotting him out there. And, hey, I was a maniac for Moniac. 
all last year. Still, still am. I want Mickey to do well. We want these guys to do well, but you know, he's just not cutting it. And, uh, and then the lack of situational hitting with this angels team boggles my mind, especially in the ninth, we had a chance to win. We had runners on first and second. Why don't you put down that butt? I understand that we had a debacle a couple weeks ago where Giorbe couldn't lay down that, that squeeze, but in this situation, you, you got to put pressures on these teams. You got to make the, the defense work. You know, you got to put the pressure on the defense. And we had a prime opportunity to win that game. And once again, Willie Calhoun grounds out to, to short for a double play. Then I think there was one other person that ended the game. I forget who batted after Willie Calhoun last night. But um, once again, the Angels couldn't get it done. And it's very frustrating. Because, you know, this team, we've been here before. We're not good in one-run games at all. No. We have – we have, and the situational hitting has been terrible, which was supposed to improve this year under Wash. So, you know, the first two games in the series so far, we play another game here on Thursday night. Um, you just got to wonder what's going to happen when the situation arises again. You know, Milu, I'm hope now I don't advocate for like violence or whatever, but my hope is that they stand up for Neto and they throw at Soto. You know, first pitch maybe. Throw right at him. Yeah. You know, just because of what he did. Yeah, why not? Get this team pumped up. We need a good brawl. Need you know, you don't see many brawls in baseball anymore because, you know, Everyone's making too much money and they don't want to get hurt. But you yeah. know, in baseball, you got to give you got to give the the team the other team a little baseball justice every once in a while. Go back to old school, you know, you know, being a guy, throw behind him, you know, throw at his butt or something. We'll don't see. Don't hit him in the head. Don't right. go head hunting, but we saw know, that with uh, give him a little brush back. With what was it with uh, Marinzic? Remember, um, Jake I, for, I think it was Noel Ramirez was pitching to Marinzic, and he yeah. was trying to hit him like on the, on, you know, in the back, on, on yeah. the shoulder, on, yeah. or on the side, and he went high, and that's what yeah. the Astro dugout was pissed about. And then right. Pujols came over because they were yelling at yep. him. And that was like 2019, I want to say. That's funny how Marinzic is now in the Angels Triple A team. So Sandoval starts today. The both lefties, Carlos Rendon, is starting for the uh, Yankees. Rendon is six and two with a two nine five ERA, with uh, fifty seven strikeouts. Sandoval, uh, two and seven record, five sixty ERA, and the same amount of strikeouts though at fifty seven. Uh, my guess is Sandoval is going to get tore up by that lineup. Uh, I know they have a lot of power lefties. But they also have Judge right there for the righties and Stanton. And I imagine everybody hits a home run. Uh, you know, Stanton and Judge were kind of uh, sheltered yesterday. But I figured on Thursday's game, they're going to hit one after Sandoval. I really think that. Uh, how do you think Sandoval's start will go? And will Pilar be in the lineup? <laughs> well, the lineup hasn't came out yet but i mean yeah sandoval if he doesn't get his mental ability under control his his mental stability i should say um if he gets angry at himself yeah it, it's gonna be mm -hmm. it's gonna be a mess it's gonna be terrible but if he's on his game today he doesn't let anybody bother him and he uses his slider a lot more doesn't rely on his fastball too much i think he has a good chance to go at least five or six innings that's and the hope. hopefully he can – I think they – I I don't know. With Sandoval, you never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates, right? You By the way, Kevin Pillar is hitting 667 all-time versus Rendon. Rendon. So um, we'll see how he does. Sandoval um, – I know Verdugo has a hit against – or, yeah, has a hit against him. But everybody else hasn't really hit uh, – so much against um, Sandoval, so that's a little th good thing going in. Um, Renhefo's one for two, one 
I should say, batting a thousand against uh, Rendon as well. So we've seen Rendon be bad and really good, and this year he's the good Carlos Rendon. Uh, speaking of uh, Mickey Moniak, man, what do you do about him? Is it time to DFA him? You mentioned his batting average at 175 now, 120 uh, at bats, two home runs, nine RBIs, two stolen bases. OPS is only 464. It just seems like, even though he's 26 years old, it just seems like, man, he he just man, he's regressed. Just, yeah, you know, I think Todd talked about it, or, or I should say Fernando maybe last year on uh, the podcast on Monday, I think it was, where from last season he came up and he and he just broke out. Then he had the injury. Then he slumped. He broke out again and had another injury. had another slump. And then this year with all the moving around of the outfield and I think the fact that they put out Aaron Hicks there sometimes as well, and now they're putting out Adele more, and he's starting to slump as well. But the defense has been really good. With Moniak, he's kind of left out there to dry, even right. with the uh, Trout injury, Pilar is being out there. <sighs> so it just it goes all over the place. I know Moniak has these two or three starts a week, but it just seems like he has these quick batting appearances where – He's out in three strikes. Either he's popping up or striking out on strike, you know, on the third pitch. What do you do with Mickey Moniak, James? Do you do you DFA him now and bring up Marinzik, or do you let him continue to have these two to three week starts uh, at, in the lineup? What do you do, man? Well, obviously, he's still a pretty good outfielder, so you, you got to keep him for your defense. But you play him less, and you let. The guys that win you games, like Pilar, you start them. But what happens when Mike Trout comes back, if he comes back? we got to get rid of one of those guys. It's probably not going to be Pilar because he's our offense right now. So mm -hmm. it, it, it'd be a case it won't be Ward because he's one of our starters and won't be Adele because they, they're going to give him every opportunity because he's starting to hit now, even though he's starting to regress a little bit and uh, go into a slump. So you got to get rid of one of those guys. Mike Trout's not coming back until well after the all-star break, probably. So you keep Mickey Moniak. You have to play him, mm -hmm. but you, I think you reduce his playing time. You can get away with DFA him because we do have Jake Marisnik. We have, we do have other outfielders, but I think, He's just too good defensively to let go. And he was a former first round draft pick. So you, you gotta keep giving him a chance. But I think I think he should remain on the bench for now. By the way, Moniac has the yeah. twenty five starts in center field, so that's where he's yeah. mostly been, but also mostly in right field whenever uh, Trout was there. That's right. why he's been in center field more. And he's been just fine. He hasn't had those miscues like last year in Detroit. Remember that right. late game one and yeah. made up for it. Um, yeah, so I guess you got to keep him around. But I think you that question keep him had, to be, had to but, be put out yeah. there. Because you really you wonder about if he'll ever get to that first you know round status. You know, being well, a seen glimpses, you know. Pick. Yeah. We've seen glimpses of it. I mean, it's there. He's just got to he, – he's, he's got to work it out somehow. And if he doesn't, then, yeah, you, you think about D, DFA him, you know, like – or, yeah. This year is all about no. evaluation, and yeah. that's what you're literally doing. It's, a, you know, it's like the – whose line is it anyway? The points don't matter. Right. You you're literally just evaluating who you can – uh, by the way, uh, I, I didn't really mention Tyler Anderson's line. I know he did walk six and strike out four, but only given up four hits and one earned run in five innings. That was um, that was a struggle, but he got through it with only you know the one run given up. So I think that was pretty. He's been money. Yeah, I I think 
eventually we'll be talking about him in trade talks. Right. And uh, somebody's going to want him. Probably the Yankees. They saw this start and said, you know what? If he's able to keep the ball low, he could play at our stadium. It's a real um, it's a real possibility. Hunter Strickland, I know, gave up the run late yesterday, but also he's been fairly well. He's been solid. Our bullpen's been actually pretty good. I'm impressed with Simber, the Contreras yeah. kid that we got from the Pirates. He's been pretty good. Um, the bullpen starting to come around. Even Estevez had a good outing the other night. So maybe things are turning around. I'm not going to honk my honk because I know this bullpen. I know this team, but right now we're going good. And uh, I like what I see. You know, these games have been close. We've just got to finish these teams off. Other from Friday, or, last Friday night. Right. <laughs> Where they got yeah. behind the ball or got oh, behind yeah. really fast. Uh, yeah, you mentioned the bullpen. It's funny how, again, you need all three phases of the team right. to do well in order to do well. Like, one day it's the pitching that that does well, but then the offense, like yesterday, can't get anybody home. Just fizzles. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's one or the other. And, and by the know, way, with all the walks, yeah. it could have been like eight to one yesterday, right. New York. Yeah, we held them. I mean, we did, we it was a good game. We we did a fantastic job of limiting the damage. We just got to execute. You know, we got to be able to score runs when we have people in scoring position, you know. We got to you just got to hit the ball. You got to have better situational hitting and it's just it's Fun. it's going to come like it's a it's a young team. There's a lot of growing pains. But like you said, this is this this season we're evaluating certain players. Mm. It's Why not, does it feel maybe, like August already, Milu? I know it does. It 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 it's, it's <laughs> it a like very September. August to May right oh. now. It feels like it's September, but I, I wish it was because maybe it would be over <laughs> faster and we won't have to but you know, this this is the reality of Angels baseball right now, and it really sucks, but like, it is what it is. Like Fernando said that one podcast right. earlier this week, it would be just cool to hey trade whatever you can and have a actual solid rebuild and try to get as right. much as you can for whomever you can. Right. And fire sell. Let's do it. I, I'm us fans, we're we're all in on that, but you know, the organization isn't for whatever reason. And it comes from the top. So it just, it's like there's no end in sight like we've been talking about. And it's just one big, nobody knows where, where they're going. No, nobody knows where this team is going. Can you believe there's, there's just, actual people out there like the Honks believe that yeah. this team still has a chance being like, how many games out? The Angels are there. <laughs> they're they're like, nine games nine out. Games nine out. Games. Nine games. And we play Seattle this ne this upcoming weekend. By the way, yeah, that Friday game is on Apple TV Plus, and you can find right. a watch party here on Hales in the Infield on YouTube. Uh, I believe on uh, X as well of that with Dominic and Todd Fox. Maybe he'll be dressed up in a little of the clown outfit. Who knows? But uh, thank you for mentioning that the weekend yeah. series. Uh, in Seattle, the first game we'll have the watch party on YouTube. Just go to Halos in the infield for that on Friday, half an hour before the game starts. They'll have a pregame show, then they'll go right into the Todd Fox uh, postgame show, which should not be, um, should be imitated or immolated <laughs> by anybody else. Let me just say that. Yeah, the standings: <laughs> the Angels are nine nine games out, um, twenty one and thirty four now. Oakland is. Right there, eight and a half back. Uh, Houston, six and a half back in third place. And then you have Texas, three and a half back of first place, Seattle. And Seattle has been the only team in the last 10 games that has been over 500 at six and four. And they've won four straight, by the way, Seattle. So the Angels playing the Mariners at the wrong damn time. Uh, of course. Some, other, <laughs> some other things, news and notes. Uh, the Angels, the run differential at negative 36. Can you believe this? The Oakland A's 
have a run differential of negative 62, and there's still a game under or above us, I should say. Half game. The whole division. Uh, the whole AL West has a negative run di- differential right now. Other from Texas just by one, if you can believe yeah. that. And if you think the Angels are losing at home a lot, you're right. They're seven and twenty at the Big A, and then fourteen and fourteen on the road away. So weird. I can't ever remember an Angel team that bad at home. It, it yeah, just it's never even the worst teams that we've had in the past growing up. Um, I've never known an Angels team to be this bad at home. And, and they're coming up on kind of a record, I guess, from what I was reading, a, a dubious record where they, they could they continue on like this. They could have one of the, the worst home records, uh, home records in the modern era. So, And they're trending toward the right. 100 loss yeah. record or more than right. 95, which would be the record. So this could be a record-breaking team and not in a good way. Oh, the opposite of 2008. Um, by the way, their record against above 500 at 9 and 24, if you care to note. So there's just really nothing positive to say. I dare AMA 30 and Roger Lodge try to come up with something positive. I dare them. There's nothing. They always do. <laughs> there's nothing. They, they, they spin it in a positive direction. That's. That's what they do. That's their job, and that's they have to. I guess one positive thing to mention: Michael Stefanik uh, has been reinstated from the IL. Remember, in spring training, he got hurt right away, and he was out for a while. They did option him to Triple A Salt Lake City for the Bees. Uh, they moved uh, the right-hander Jose Cicero to the 60-day IL. Probably won't see him again this year. Um, manager Ron Washington said Stefanik will have to earn his call up to the majors. So we'll see if another injury comes up in the infield and maybe, uh, Stefanik will be up and that's the way he earns it. In his six rehab games, he hit 474 with, uh, Salt Lake City and he had six RBIs, um, uh, in 25 games, uh, with the angels. So, uh, so we'll see about him. If he ever comes back, there was a report about Mike Trout giving an update on his surgically repaired left knee. He met on Saturday, uh, said he's been making solid progress with his left knee undergoing the surgery on May 3rd. Uh, he rode on a bike. He rode, rode the elliptical and we'll soon wrap it up on a treadmill. Uh, there's, he said he'll be starting baseball activities shortly, but again, there's no timetable for his return. No. Uh, Brennan Drury has that left hamstring issue strain. Uh, he's expected to come back June 11th. Uh, we'll see if that will be the case. Remember, he hurt that on May 8th against the Pirates, and he's been on the injury list since May 9th. We'll see if that happens. And if you're wondering about Miguel Sano. Uh, we haven't seen him in a while since uh, April 28th, or uh, I should say 26th. He left April 26th was a game he left uh, with left knee soreness. He's possibly going to be back from the soreness on the surgically repaired left knee. And it just sucks because Sano was doing very, very well up until the injury. So you got any opinions about that, Milo? Well, he did burn himself. Did you hear about this? That's what I heard. Which is delaying his rehab somewhat. But he was reinstated today. But he's going to be with the team. But uh, as soon as his burn heals up in the next few days, he'll be back to his rehab assignment. Then shortly thereafter, he's expected to join the Angels. So um, much needed defense and a much needed bat. And Miguel said no. Hopefully, being up with the big club soon. But uh, yeah, an- another one for the Angels. Another one in the books for the Angels. A burn. Another one <laughs> from a heating pad, delaying his rehab. So, but yeah, we're gonna get some guys back. Um, at that time, we may well be out of everything, but mm-hmm. it's still early. 
for all you Halo Hawks. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, it's still oh, early. My God. Yeah. We stay that well into September. It's still early. <laughs> it's getting late early. It's getting late early, like uh, Yogi. It's Bennett getting late said. early now. I, I mean, love that quote. I love that so much. It's still early. So it's getting late for yeah. us. Um, just make sure to go to No Barrel Works there on Sinclair Street, sixteen twenty-one. Uh, I was there. I tried the new confetti uh, stout they have. It was tremendous. Oh, it was tremendous. Oh, you need a cold drink on a hot day, you go there before the game. Free parking, which is free right there. A good walk in the Angel Stadium. Uh, go to 714 Tickets for your ticket needs. 714 Tickets, 714 Tickets. You can call today, and you can definitely go tonight. Put in Believe for your 50% off. It works. Or 10%. You can also put Heaty in there, I believe, and that will still work and you get 10% off your tickets. It's worth it. Especially we have some games coming up against the Padres. My birthday's on Tuesday. So by the time uh, I see you on the next episode, I'll be one year older. So um, I'm, I'll be out at the ballpark. So if you see me, uh, I'll be there for angels Padres on Tuesday, June 4th, which is wow. My we got, so, you got to talk about that. That is yeah. going to be something because I want to see night. how many. That's right. That's right. I want to see how many people come from San Diego. I'll, I'll tell you right. a quick story. Uh, in 21, I think it was, they had the two game series Friday and Saturday. I think it was 21 and 22. I can't. I think it was 21. Um, no, I can't remember now. But anyway, um, there were on that Saturday night. There were four tour buses full of Padre fans who came. Oh wow! Because it was only a two game series, and it was the weekend. I don't know how they'll respond this year or this season with it being a weekday series, but hopefully a lot of people come out. Hopefully it will be a big crowd, especially for a blanket night. Uh, and be sure, of course, to go on Bet Online. It's your number one source for NHL and NBA playoffs this season. Every stat, every matchup, even live odds during the games. And then after the game, head over to our online casino and get in in a game of blackjack or poker and unwind with uh, one of their 150 slot games and head over to Bet Online to put in that code BELIEVE, the promo code, all in caps, BELIEVE, B L E A V, for 50% off your welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online. The game starts here. And guess what? The game ends here, Milu. We're out of here. Thank you for watching James Squared. The 16th We're out of here! <laughs> <laughs> Later, everyone, on that.